Picture. You're going to break that camera real quick. All right. The session's called Cloud Centric Data Management. Uh, just a quick show of hands. How many folks have heard of Commvault before? Anyone else? Okay. Pretty good number. All right. So I'll call it Cloud Centric Data Management. Uh, as I mentioned during the last session, I'm the, one of the old guys here at Commvault. Uh, led our decision to build our product on Windows back in 99, primarily for development reasons and support reasons. All right. And let's talk about data today. And we kind of see, at least from our perspective, the, the perfect storm of compute cycles improving and the amount of data that has to be managed coming together in a confluence of a perfect storm. And add to that the cloud, which is enabling more compute cycles and more storage capabilities. And we have an opportunity to manage our data much more efficiently. And I'd say the first half of the presentation will be more frame, and then I'll get actually into some live demonstrations uh, using the cloud with Commvault afterwards. So one of the things today that's driving the internet are the amount of devices. And if you look back in time, uh, about 12 years ago, for every seven humans on the planet, there was one internet-connected device. That went to one-to-one -one five years ago. Right now, we're about three internet-connected devices, and most people in this room probably have five or six per individual. But for every human, there's now three internet-connected devices on the planet. And very shortly, you're looking at seven to one. So the amount of data that these things are generating is exploding. Uh, let's look at a couple of examples. Um, Internet connected devices. Easy part is every single human on that plane probably gets internet connectivity to do what they have to do on the plane. But there's some more strategic real time tuning of data going on because the four jet engines on that plane are actually sending data down to headquarters and actually the engines are being tuned up in flight for more efficient fuel usage, for more efficient use of the engines themselves. So just another example of internet connected devices creating more and more data. Uh, the fun one folks like to talk about even more so are the cows, all right? A lot of farmers, all of their cows, you can see it on, his, on her neck right now, are internet-connected devices. And a couple of reasons. The more mundane reason is they want to know where the cows go, they're GPS-connected, where should they put down the feed so they don't waste it, and they become much more efficient in feeding the cows. Another one that's a little bit more ambitious is they want to know the cow's temperature and some other things about the cows because apparently when they want to breed the cows they actually know when to bring the bull in based on certain information about the cow at that time. So they're actually making it a little bit more uh, less spontaneous for the cows to do what they have to do but that is more data and more internet connected devices that are enabling us to manage and analyze that data. So we kind of have a big data problem, and lots of folks have different definitions. This one, I think, from McKinsey is one of the best ones, which is it refers to data sets whose size is beyond the ability of typical software tools to manage and analyze it. And I think that's what a lot of companies are having, is how do I manage all this data that I'm having, that I'm creating? It may be coming from personal devices, it may be coming from mobile devices, it may be coming from Windows, from Unix, from Linux, from Netware, from Mac all coming and how do I analyze that from a sing in a single source. Examples on numbers of data. Going back in 2009, there was 0.8 zettabytes going back to caveman drawings, counting that as data that we created. Right now, we're up to about 8 zettabytes, and that's going to multiply very quickly in five years. So all of this explosion in the amount of data from things like airplanes and things like cows have to be managed, have to be protected, have to be analyzed. So. How's Commvault helping our customers adapt to that perfect storm? And we'll give some examples. First things first, a little bit more definition of Commvault. Our philosophy, as I mentioned during the previous session, we decided to build a single software solution for backup, for archive, for business intelligence, e-discovery, encryption, deduplication. And we've remained true to that in that 100% of the code we've developed, we've shipped. All right, there is no outside third-party software part of our Commvault, with the exception of a SQL Server engine that we use that we send as part of Commvault, there's no other acquisition. Other vendors out there, <coughs> Dell EMC, IBM, Semantic Veritas, for example, their philosophy has been go out and acquire different disparate technologies to meet their customer needs. <coughs> so for example, in the case of EMC, I need a deduplication product. Let me go out and acquire a big Linux engine called Data Domain. If I need an archiving product, and I'm Symantec. Let me go out and get Enterprise Vault. 
et cetera, et cetera. So their philosophy is meet their customer needs with going out and acquiring different disparate technologies, which means I need different IT teams. I have a backup set of data. I have an archive set of data. I have an e-discovery set of data. I have an analysis set of data, et cetera, et cetera. Our philosophy was a little bit simple. Use Windows Server as our foundation or Azure or AWS as that foundation and enable Commvault with a single piece of software, oftentimes with breast of breed capabilities, to do what all those products will do. Most Commvault customers will have four, five, six, seven different disparate solutions before we went in. Now we run alongside all those products, but there is a lot of advantageous capability with a single solution set. And I'll give a lot of demonstrations of that very shortly. So a little bit on cloud-centric. We do use Windows or the Windows VMs <coughs> to manage the heterogeneous enterprise. And that does mean support for Unix and Linux and DB2 and Oracle and Sybase and MySQL, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> we see the cloud as a tier for maybe remote laptops, sending data directly to the cloud for protection. We see the tier for disk to disk to cloud, oftentimes replacing tape, oftentimes getting out of the quote-unquote Iron Mountain game by sending tapes to a remote location. Now they'll just send that secondary copy of data or third copy of data to the cloud. Cloud compute, we saw a whole bunch of vendors here providing analytics and new capabilities around that cloud compute engine. Well, Commvault takes advantage of that as well. Uh, for the foreseeable future, this is gonna be a hybrid environment for quite some time, all right? And we wanna still continue to enable one single software to do that. So let's define data management from Commvault's perspective before we get into the demos. All right, data recovery and protection. Commvault's definition is maybe taking an email from a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago on a different release and bring it back into my current revision or bring it back into, for example, something like an Office 365. So it's granularly managing the data in addition to full disaster recovery. And that does bring virtualization into it. How many folks here are VMware users? Right. A lot of folks raise their hand. How many folks are Hyper-V users? All right. We're getting a number of requests to move from VMware from a cost perspective because Hyper-V is free. Uh, you know. So one of the features in our data recovery capability is taking backups of VMware at the file volume or the full VMDK level and moving those directly to VHDs or into Hyper-V or into VMs in Azure or VMs into AWS. So we're helping folks migrate to sometimes less expensive, more feature set data, more feature set environments. Compliance, governance, and archiving. Right? Archiving, if I, you know, there's several hundred people in this room, I've asked you your definition of archiving, I'd probably get several hundred different answers. Archiving could be tiered store. I want to move old data off to secondary and tertiary deep storage in case I ever need it back because I'm under a five year or seven year <coughs> compliance retention requirement. So being able to migrate that data based on policy very easily, very quickly, and do that for across the enterprise easily, is what Convo wants to help with. Provisioning, when we move data, setting DR situations and DR scenarios into the cloud. Very healthy thing to do today, but also setting up so you can also auto-provision those VMs in the cloud. Makes it much easier on the IT teams. Uh, we just spent 45 minutes going over analytics and intelligence, and that analytics and that intelligence is only as good as the content. And providing that content and making it very simple for the end users and the businesses to gain access to that content and search for data becomes a differentiator, and we'll showcase that very shortly. All right, a couple of uh, examples, I'll bring Microsoft up for exa an example here. Um, we've got a lot of experience so supporting the cloud. We supported Azure for eight years, actually before it was called Azure, back when it was called Microsoft Cloud Services. Supported AWS for about the same amount of time, and we've actually used Azure in production ourselves. So we are kind of eating our own dog food by using cloud as part of our business. Oftentimes, Commvault.com itself is in the cloud. Um, 17 years, it's funny, we talk about the DevOps in probably one of the more powerful DevOps environments I like to reference as a case study is Microsoft's Office Products Group. So for the past 17 years, that large DevOps environment, so if you've ever used Exchange, if you've ever used uh, PowerPoint, ever used Excel, that's out of the Office Products Group, and we've helped protect that environment for 17 years, a massive amount of data, seven, eight petabytes worth of data being managed. And yeah, that's one of the things we do. Uh, let's bring it back down to maybe our families and maybe some folks here. Uh, I have a 22, 21, and 17-year-old kids. 
obviously been in the industry for a while. And I get to bring it home to them, and I say, with what Daddy does, we cannot have any social media embarrassing situations. All right? I do not want to wake up one day and see you guys plastered all over Facebook in a negative way or plastered all over Twitter. And I tell them, you know, be very careful because you guys are three of about the 48 million users that are Xbox Live users. And Daddy's protecting that data, and Daddy can actually go find and search that content. So bring it right down to actually managing the data that our kids are providing through Xbox Live, for example. All right? And working obviously very closely with Microsoft and the Azure team. A little more resume building on Commvault for the past five years, over six, year, six years, over five cycles. Top of the top when it comes to Gartner, data management, backup, recovery, and a lot of notoriety from Microsoft. So I like to do a lot more demonstrations. That usually generates a lot of Q&A, which I'd like to keep this as interactive as we can. So let's do a couple of demonstrations. Uh, here's my mailbox. All right. And I'm going to take this one message. And if you look at it, where'd the screen go? Guys in the back? There it is. It's up. That it went away. So you had it in the. There it goes. All right. You guys hit that special button in the back. Uh, all right. So here's my mailbox. And as I mentioned, I've been in Commonwealth for 21 years. So I got a lot of data. Matter of fact, I'm one of the IT guys' worst nightmare because my mailbox itself is about 50 gig. Um, two reasons. One, I like to stress our system. Number two is I'm a spoiled brat and I like to save everything I possibly can. So here's an email that I got from a lady named Cammie about over 10 years ago. And for those who are a little bit Microsoft affluent, this would be on Exchange 2003, even though I'm running Exchange 13 right now. And the same capability for the IBM folks out there, this would work with Lotus Notes Domino as well. So I'm going to take this one message and tombstone it, or permanently delete it. So the message from Cami is gone. So we'll take a look at a, a walk, crawl, run kind of scenario on recovering that individual message. Here's the Commvault administrative interface. And we'll start off with the boring way first, the administrative way. So I want to map, this is my ability to manage all of the data in my entire enterprise. Exchange, SharePoint, Unix, Linux, NetWare, Oracle, DB2, et cetera, et cetera. We want to give the ability to, to granularly manage data where we can. So I want to manage Exchange at a very granular level. And I want to simply do a browse and restore. And the first question is, when do I want to see the data? From a week ago, a month ago, a year ago? I'm just going to take a look at all of it right now. Now, as the administrator, everyone's mailbox becomes available to me to manage. Into my mailbox. And the first thing I notice is, in addition to email, the e-discoverable compliance required information like contacts, calendar items, did someone know about a meeting, conversations, et cetera, et cetera, that's also available to me to manage. But in this case, I want to go into the inbox, and we're going to do a lot of searching here, so I'm going to save the, the way cool stuff for later and just do a reverse chronological sort. And there's a message from Cami from May of 2004. I'll flag it, make the restore request. Do I want it to go to the same mailbox or a different one? We'll put it right back where it came from. Now, so what did we do? We asked Commvault to find a little tiny message from Exchange 2003 in my mailbox, find it, and put it in my mailbox on Exchange 13. Release independence keep folks with an e-discovery compliance requirements. And since we're at the Cloud Expo, I decided to use the cloud as the target in which to bring that data back from. So I'm bringing the data back, in this case from Azure, into my mailbox from Exchange 03 to Exchange 13. And while I was speaking, there's the message restored exactly as it was. All right, so what used to take folks hours, days, Weeks. You know, could you imagine rebuilding an old Exchange 2003 server to find a message to bring back uh, pen drives? Lots of time. So, cloud becomes a great location to store a lot of this long-term archival of data. So, again, that's the I consider that the old-fashioned way. So, a lot of our customers have said, you know, that that's nice, but we'd like to use the term self-service IT. You know, can users manage their own data? I said, yep, yeah, we can actually probably build that into things like Outlook. So what I see here is 
I have a lot of live folders. This could be on-prem exchange. This could be O365. Again, could be Lotus Notes, Domino. But we also created a virtual repository, which either good or bad we called Content Store, which gives me every single message that I've ever had in my mailbox available to me as an individual user. I can open these messages up. I can reply to them. I can be on a plane and not even be connected to the internet and do what I have to do. I can forward it to somebody else, but I can't change it. It's e-discoverable, it is protected. So in this case, what I want to do is just quickly maybe do a, a user level recovery of this, in, this little message. So I'll bring it, drag it into my current mailbox or copy it. And if I go back to my current mailbox, I should see two messages say skill card. And there they are. So we've got the administrative way of managing data, and we've used cloud, and we've got the individual self-service IT ability to manage that data. So we just kind of did one example from Microsoft Exchange. Let's go one step further, and we'll go into a collaborative application called SharePoint. And I'm going to bring this all together with a little bit of search in a little bit, so uh, bear with me on the demonstrations. Here's SharePoint. And I'm going to go into the Microsoft Docs area, and I'm going to take a, an Azure V4, and we will delete this. Send it to the recycle bin. And we'll go back to the recycle bin and delete it out of there as well. So it's been completely removed from SharePoint. Azure V4 is gone. So go back to the Commvault admin <coughs> administrator interface, and now we want to manage SharePoint. And we're going to browse the same exact way. I don't have to learn anything new because I'm managing a different application. Uh, the screens would look the same for Oracle or, or other environments. I have a couple of sites loaded. I'll scroll down, go to the Microsoft Docs area. Oh, there's the Azure V4. Make the restore request. I can go to the same or different SharePoint server. I'll put it right back where it came from. But again, we're using the cloud as a location to store that data and bring it back. So again, Less expensive storage. I can go disk to disk. I can go disk to disk to Azure, disk to disk to AWS, uh, various cloud targets. And again, we're using and showcasing how cloud is e seamlessly and very simply integrated with what would be typical data management, which is really making our users much more efficient. So that recovery will take about the same amount of time as the Exchange Restore did. It's restored. We'll come back. I have to refresh the screen here, so you'll see me highlight the word refresh up top. And there's Azure V4 back exactly as it was. All right. Live demos, live systems, backup recovery in this case. Again, we're very strategically using the cloud. Now, at the heart of most of the environments in the cloud or on-prem is something called Active Directory. So we'll do... One more quick little demonstration from basic DR, then we'll get into content search and previewing some analytics stuff. So I'm going to give myself a promotion right now. I'm going to change my description. I am now the Convault Zamboni driver. Those of you who know, I have a little bit of a hockey background. So I changed that title. One attribute in AD has been tweaked. We'll come back to Convault. Manage Active Directory. I'll browse. Again, consistent, consistent look and feel across the applications. Every object, every attribute becomes available to me to manage. Go into Users. Now I can bring back my entire object with security ID information or just the single attribute. And I'll make the restore request. And again, we're using Azure as a tier. So using cloud for cheap storage. And the nice thing is I'm in California right now. Obviously, we're headquartered in New York. Uh, I'm sorry, headquartered in New Jersey, so I can have easy access to my data no matter where it is because of the cloud. And I'll bring this single attribute back, and we'll confirm that's recovered. And then we'll get into some search and show how easy it is to actually add cloud as a target. The attributes brought back. We'll come back to Active Directory. I'll refresh the screen. Scroll down, and the attribute has been reset exactly as it was. So let's get a little more search now. Let's 
because what we said, it's the folks who have access to the data based on content will be the ones that are winning. They're the ones that will be much more efficient. So when Commvault moves the data, or maybe even today with our new release don't have to move the data, but as we move it, we have the ability to index it. So I'll log in, and I'll do a, I'm going to do a search across my enterprise. And that's going to be a content search. I'm just going to search for the word Azure for, to, to, keep, to keep consistent with the Cloud Expo. And that search is going to be across all my exchange mail, all my SharePoint, all my file system data, heterogeneous data, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll simply search for the word Azure. 1001, 1002, everything brought back. Now, if you remember the SharePoint demonstration I did with the term Azure V4, there's the SharePoint item available to me to manage. I even get an HTML rendered preview, and I can actually get substring match on what I search for. This improves the efficiency of the IT teams. It'll improve the efficiency of the DevOps teams as well, and anybody who needs access to this data. And imagine what analytics engines can do with this type of content. Scroll down. We kind of showed integration with SharePoint. Let's scroll down a little bit. Here's one more example from an email. I'll open up the email, and I notice one thing steps out of me is that as I go through it, I don't necessarily see the word what I searched for, which was Azure. But luckily, there is an attachment here, which will open up, and we'll actually go into several different hundred attachment types and actually do the content indexing of that data as well. So PDFs, Excels, Office products type of data can be managed just as efficiently. So let's take a look at how hard or how easy it would be to add a cloud library. Well, here's the machine I'm working on. Very simply, I'm going to say add a cloud storage library. And we're going to call it Cloud Expo Santa Clara. And the first thing it'll ask for is, is it a new device? And yes, it is. And I simply pick the cloud target that I want to use. And you see a number of them out there. All right, I pick the cloud target I want, get my credentials from my cloud provider, and with Commvault, I can that easily and immediately begin using the cloud as a tiered storage target. Now, where this all comes together, if I hopefully have internet connectivity still, is I'm going to connect to a VPN. And connect to an Azure network. And I can connect to, this would be transparent to AWS as well. Connect in. Go to remote desktop connection. Log in. And what I'm showing now is that same product that I did all the demonstration with before, which was initially on-prem, push, pull to and from the cloud, I'm now running the same application directly out of the cloud. And this could be an AWS environment, this could be an Azure environment, which means I can manage all those VMs and all that data that may have been created in the cloud. I can also manage, as I mentioned, heterogeneous environments. So for example, here's a Linux browse, and I can also manage data on-prem from the cloud just as efficiently. So we take a look at the, just to keep the Linux folks happy, we'll take a look at a browse of a Linux file system. And again, the same look and feel. I don't have to learn anything new because I, I'm now managing a different operating system or a different environment. Oh. And there's the tree from the Linux side. And I can actually manage this data and I can move it into Windows or Network and actually make it very easy to move data between platforms. So with that, we got about five minutes left, which I was told to leave for open Q&A. And if anybody's got a question, the guys with the mics, because I cannot see a thing up here. I am completely blind with the lights. So if anybody has a question, OK. Yes. Version ID 
Okay. Yes, we can restore. The question was, when we did the SharePoint restore, could I, for example, if I'm mistaken the question, could I restore the same major and minor number of the SharePoint app? Yes, we can. We use, you know, because of our unique relationship with Microsoft, they were a big equity owner of ours many years ago, we cannot go outside the bounds. We can't illegally read JET databases. We can't do things that are supposedly unsupported. So, yes, we do bring the SharePoint information back exactly as it was. And it's using proper uh, SharePoint methodology APIs. One addition to that is we're not restricted to the STS ADM API based on sites because there are some limitations on sites and subsite sizes. So we go away, we allow our customers to go way above that using some of the replication APIs that SharePoint and MSDN provide. So that also helps the SharePoint environment. What kind of storage, uh, storage, storage uh, strategy do you have in order to boost the? Uh, Data discovery uh, performance. Okay, question. I think is what storage strategy do we recommend? Do we use or do we recommend? No, you are using. Okay, Commvault will uh, internally. Uh, I guess uh, I'm talking about cloud uh, uh, infrastructure level, like a direct attached storage, block level, object storage. You know. Okay. We Commvault or, uses. Or SAN, your NAS. What kind okay. of? Okay, you know? we will we'll support various different SAN cheap SATA disk technology from a disk perspective. NAS devices, uh, NetApps devices, EMC SANS will make a lot of the snapshot calls with those technologies. We do support you know, cheap SATA disk as well and use that very efficiently from a, in a global deduplication perspective. And that global deduplication significantly reduces the amount of storage. Sometimes over 90% they'll actually be stored on a primary and secondary location, which makes the cloud a much more attractive target for tiered storage. So it could be, we'll support disk, tape, cloud. Yeah, the reason I'm asking you, if you, if you, your customer like uh, search from uh, their data lake applications, Okay. so the size of big data is huge, right? No, not I mean, necessarily. Not necessarily? We'll, not necessarily, no. We'll actually make the content index a much smaller piece of the overall amount of data. It'll be significantly, you know, a fraction you know, a small fraction of the overall amount of data. Yeah, and we'll make that searchable across the entire enterprise. And that's, you know, we did build an enterprise solution set um, on day one. We didn't build a workgroup product and try to have it scale out, which is why, you know, multiple petabytes worth of data is something common for us and our customers. Good question. Other questions? Active Directory. Active Directory. An object, a user. From, uh, Active Directory and, oh, thanks. So if somebody uh, has deleted a, an object from Active Directory, user, mm -hmm. whatever, um, then and you discover this maybe six months later because they've been on extended uh, PTO or uh, mm -hmm. family leave or something, uh, you can go back and retrieve that back in. Yes, we, can, we have the ability, we enable granular management of Active Directory. That, uh, look, I'm one of the few guys who um, knows LDAP, which is the, you know, that's almost the Greek version of managing, you know, you gotta learn, like learning Greek to manage Active Directory. So we come up with a graphical user interface way of managing AD much, much more efficiently. And I can bring back the entire object. Matter of fact, when I bring back the entire object or user, I'll bring back the security ID information. We'll kind of tweak with the Tombstone API to make sure that gets brought back efficiently. Or we can enable, it's actually more common when people get brought back, the object might be there, but their office may change, their title may change, their phone number may change. So the ability to get back the individual attributes becomes very critical. We want to enable that to occur, as I showed you, very, very easily. And this also works with third-party applications that extend the schema of Active Directory. So we'll make sure we get all those customized attributes as well. Okay. And you, the backup, your housing, or do we ah, use your question. service for where, where do we okay. house all the backup? All right, um, a few things. Commvault provides software and services, all right? Generally, customers will use the targets, the storage targets in their own environment or in one of the many cloud vendors out there. We do offer a managed services offering for our customers to work with them about optimizing where that data may get stored as well. But we're not the, you know, we're not the rack space per se. We're not the Azure. We'll use Azure. Rackspace uses us as part of their data management capabilities.
but we're not the you know, be-all, end-all hoster of the data, but we'll work with just about everything that would be out there in the industry that folks may want to use. Good questions. And I, somebody's got, you have to come up here and see how blind you are up here. Unless you're on the wide ends, I can't see a thing. So this is telling me what a blinking red light time is up, so I do appreciate everybody uh, hanging around. If you have questions, come find me. We'll have a, a, a booth in the expo hall. Bob Smolniak and some other folks from Commonwealth will be there. Please follow up and ask questions, and I appreciate everybody uh, hanging around and sticking around for the session. Thank you. Thank you.